In this video, we're going to take a look at a more advanced section of Visual Basic scripting. We're going to take a look at macro pumps. A macro pump, for those that have heard the term and haven't got a clue what it is, is simply a block of logic code which sits in the background of your controller running consistently. It runs once, and then a fifth of a second later it runs again, and then a fifth of a second later it runs again. If the macro pump script takes longer than a fifth of a second, it will end naturally and then run on the next fifth of a second interval. At no time will two macro pumps be run together or one macro pump run twice. There's a limit of one macro pump for each profile that you have. In the controller, under configuration state, there is a checkbox for run macro pump. If yours has not been turned on and you're just turning it on now, you'll have to restart the software in order for a macro pump to take effect. Now in order to turn on a macro pump, first turn it on in the configure state like I just did, and then call up the Visual Basic script editor. Now let's open up a macro pump. You can see in my Mach, Mach 3 mil directory, and Incidentally, this is off of Mach 3 macros and then to Mach 3 mil in my case. If you're using a profile called My Profile, then it would be located in Mach 3 macros, My Profile. You'll notice I have a macro pump.m1s. You probably do not. You will have to write a script and simply save it as macro pump.m1s in order to use macro pumps. Now, I've turned on a macro pump, but Whenever you change or save a macro pump file, you have to restart the software because the macro pump, unlike other scripts, is loaded once at startup. It is then compiled, stored in memory as a compiled program, and then repeatedly rerun. This is to save time to make things more efficient and more robust in terms of error handling. So let's take a look at how a macro pump operates. One way, one way that we can do that is to simply do a test run. We know that this DRO here can be attached to with get DRO or set DRO. So let's take a variable. We'll call it bar is equal to get DRO zero. And that will get this DRO, which is the exposition DRO, which is zero. We can then say bar is equal to bar plus one. So we'll increment it from whatever number is there. Then we'll do a set DRO, 0, comma, bar. This program, as you can see, all it does is read in the X DRO, add 1 to it, and store it back out to the X. So then we save it, and we're ready to run a macro pump. The macro pump will run automatically on the next run of the program. So we'll exit the program, start it up again. Now, without pushing reset, the macro is actually running in the background. But Mach 3 ignores many commands unless you are in a safe condition. And one of the commands that it ignores is set DRO. So we have to do a reset in order to be able to watch the macro pump operate. Now you can see that the XDRO is now counting several times a second. And it's doing that because it's been told in the background to keep on counting. Now you'll also notice that it keeps reverting back to another number. This is because I'm using the XDRO. There's all kinds of processes within Mach 3 that use that DRO. So the macro pump is being overridden. It does not have a high priority. Macro pumps have a low priority. And their purpose is, is simply to run in the background and do housekeeping tasks. It's much like informing a butler that if he sees an ashtray that's dirty, to empty it. And the macro pump simply looks at the logic you give it and performs those commands repeatedly. So as you can see, it's just constantly counting. If I was to jog right now, you can see it doesn't really interfere too much with the jogging until I stop. If I jog my y-axis, you'll notice that the x-axis stops. This is because other more high-priority 